Hey everyone, this is Anna Finch from Finch Press. Now, today's video is mainly a discussion on um, getting an ABN, so an Australian business number, getting a business name, and just an overall experience on doing that and like what you need to know if you're setting up a business in Australia. Okay, so first off, ABN, so an Australian business number, is required from everyone who lives in Australia and is operating some sort of business or enterprise. So this could be something like, um, so setting up your own business where, where you trade goods or services, um, making supplies. So they're the main ones. There's no actual test for an ABN um, to determine if what you have is a business. So it, whether or not you're found to be a business depends on how you answer the form um, and you get a it's a pretty quick response. Now you are generally considered to be a business if you provide a commercial activity so products or services so you're making and selling a product or even just selling and distributing a product for profit. Um, you intend to make a profit, you repeat the activity so it's not just a one-off um, you carried it out in a business-like manner, so this includes things like having a business plan, keeping records and receipts of things you've purchased. So now, if in Australia at least, if you are writing a novel, it's generally considered, from what I've been able to find out, it's generally considered best practice to get an ABN. The only exception is if you're just writing as a hobby and you're just publishing one book once off for free on Amazon. If you're not earning a profit, it's a hobby. Um, or you sell a product one off and to get it back. Now, if, for example, you decide to provide things like publishing services, so beta reading, um, formatting f using Vellum, which is what I'm planning on doing eventually, you need an ABN because it is a business you are earning a profit. Okay. Um, the business models. So when before you get an ABN, you need to know what business model you are using. So what I mean by business model is basically how are you structuring your business? So are you doing it as an individual? Are you doing it in a partnership? Are you doing it as a company or a trust? So you have to decide that. So we have multiple options for it. Um, so the one I chose, which is sole trader, basically means I'm the only owner of the business. I am legally responsible for legally responsible for um, all aspects of the business, so things like promoting, things like debt management. I shouldn't be in debt because I'm selling a product. Um, and I'm generally paying for all the pro paying for things like editing out of my own pocket. But you can get into debt if you're selling books and yeah, I'll talk about that in the Ingram video. Um, so you're responsible legally for everything. You are the only person who is responsible for the company. You can hire employees. So if it grows and you need someone like an assistant to help manage your calendar or if you need to hire a permanent editor or if you need, basically if you need to employ people, you can. You can employ them as contractors or you can have them as just general employees and you're responsible for setting up things like payroll um, super or at least assuring that they have a super um, and things like that so you can do that um, with a sole trader so I'm going to be publishing books under my under my own name or my the shortened version of my name which is what I use here um, and I also intend on publishing with my younger brother um, now I can put it as sole trader because right now we haven't made anything specifically and right now he is we're just writing a book together we plan on publishing it under my business name at least from what he said um, and I would just have to pay him the royalties or his share of the royalties that allows me to do that without him having to set up his own business because he doesn't know if he wants to make a living from writing novels and novellas and things like that so right now 
it's just a project that we're working on together and it most likely will be one off. Um, so he won't need a business number because he's employed as a contractor, if you get what I mean. Um, you, one of the benefits with sole trading, at least in Australia, you don't need your own separate business tax file number. Generally, unless unless you are earning millions, you can generally, as a sole trader, operate under your own individual tax file number because you are an individual. So you don't have to get a special tax file number. You can just run it as part of your normal taxes. When you do when you do your taxes, you can go to your normal tax agent and it will just be filed under the business section and you pay income tax and all that on that particular business. Um, you can claim expenses, things to do with whatever the business is, so tools, supplies for the business, in my case, a laptop. Um, so you can do that. Um, you don't have to register for GST, which is basically the extra tax that is put on goods and services. Uh, I think it's 10% or something. You don't have to register for that unless you are earning more than 75000 a year from that business. So if you're earning less, it's optional. One problem, though, is if you intend to publish with Apple, uh, Apple Books directly, you will need a GST. You will need to register for GST. They will not allow you to do it without it. And they will ask you to fill in a whole bunch of other forms, which is why I'm not publishing with them directly, but through um, draft to digital um, So you have to pay some tax. You pay the same tax rates as the individual rather than a business. Um, but you do need to make sure you have some money put aside um, to pay income tax at the end of the year. Um, so. At the end of financial year, you need to make sure you have some money put aside to pay tax. Um, what else? And you can do that by setting up as a pay-as-you-go system. So at, out of every couple of months, you pay a certain amount on your income as tax. Okay. Um, another option you can do for the structure is partnership. So two or more people work in a partnership, set up their own business name and things like that. Um so it can be between family, it can be limited, meaning one person has more responsibility than the other, or other, which is equal responsibility. That's an option. Um, I don't intend to do that. Um, I just intend to do sole trading. Now, what I found with the ABN application, um, it was relatively easy to complete. Um, most of the questions were easy to understand. There are a couple where you have to put um, the main business activities. That was a bit confusing because I had to, I put in publishing my own novels or publishing poetry, and it gave me like 30 options to pick from. So I had to ring up the ABN to ask them, what do I put down? Um, which was okay. I mean, the phone calls were good. They replied quickly. Um, they explained it. So, the filing for an ABN is free. You do not have to file, you do not have to pay any fees to set up an ABN, so an Australian business number. You do have to pay a fee if you uh, apply for a business name. But business number, which is basically for the selling of goods and services, it just shows that you're a registered business and that you're not a scammer, basically. Um, Fairly easy to do, and it's free. You can also go to the start.business.gov.au um, website um, in order to assess whether or not you are eligible or whether you need an ABN. Yeah. Um, the ATO website, so the Australian Tax Office website, has information about business, which has different levels of information for the different structures, about ABNs, business names. It's pretty much got everything connected to tax on there. Um, the ATO has a education website for tax, um, which is the language is a bit more simpler um, and easier to follow and broken down into smaller pieces if you're interested in looking at that. Um, now, 
for the ABN application, you need a TFN, so a tax file number, tax registration number, um, and I do recommend going to a tax agent for this, um, tax registration number uh, for the agent. Um, you can fill it in later and update it later so you don't have to put it straight away, which is what I had to do because <laughs> I, I could not remember the number. Um, personal advisor, so financial advisors, things like that, if you've got one. Um, the date you want the ABN required, so you can apply for the ABN six months before you start business. So you only can claim whatever, from my understanding, claim tax on any items purchased after that date. Um, so I put for next week um, because I intend on well finishing my editing my novel and setting up pre-orders by August, start of August at the latest. Um, so I need it relatively soon. Um, your entity legal name, so this is your actual name, um, business contact details, business activities, locations, things like that, fairly simple. Um, if you, uh, here's the thing with um, paying tax on this, if you earn more than one dollar per financial year for your business under the ABN, you are required to pay, you are required to do your tax, even if it's just a form saying you're below the threshold. You're required to pay it. You're required to do your tax. Um, business name registration, again, relatively simple. You can register after you finish registering for the ABN, which after I finished and filled out the form, it took like 10 seconds for me to say, for it to say successful, and I got it in my ABN instantly. Um, so once it's done that, you can, in the same page, apply for. GST, you can apply for a whole bunch of other stuff, including your business name. So this is a name you're going to be operating under. So right now, I'm currently only using one pseudonym for my writing. If I want to write in a different genre, or if I want to do co-writing, but you only put one name on the cover, then I would prefer to have a business name so I can actually put it as like a publisher, rather than it will allow me to put different author names um, for different genres or styles of books which is helpful um, so this is basically just in case and it also looks a little bit more professional if you have a business name rather than using your actual name um, and because I'm write, writing under a pseudonym technically I can't really use my actual name because then it's going to be false information on the book. So business name separate, which means I can put a pseudonym um, at, for the cover for the author. Um, fairly easy. So you can apply straight through there. They ask a couple of questions. Um, you type in what you want your business name to be. It tells you what's available. It tells you if it sounds similar to any other businesses currently active. Um, so Finch Press Publishing. No, that exact phrase was available, so I could do it. But it sounded similar, or looked similar, to 10 other business names. So I put Finch Press instead for the business. But YouTube channel, I'll just have Finch Press Publishing, um, simply because that's what the name is set up as, and I can't be bothered changing it on here. But Finch Press is the actual business name. Same with the website link. I've already got the link and website set up. I'll just make sure on the actual website it says Finch Press for the um, publisher name. Um, fairly easy, again. Uh, it took maybe 10 seconds for it to say, yep, it's been successfully registered on the condition we receive payment. So the, a the business name you have to pay for, you can pay per year or per three years. It is cheaper to pay for three years. One year is $47 and you have to pay that every year. Um, the three years is 87 so it's cheaper to pay for three years so I did that I do intend to continue publishing so um, I do intend to continue publishing so paying for three years means I don't have to worry about it but it's only $87 that's about about 40 no about 35 US dollars so it's not bad for three years of having your business name registered um, you could also in that same 
um, application, you can apply for a dom buy a domain name at the same time. I didn't because I've got two domain names um, that I bought um, because Finch Press wasn't available. That's why I put Finch Press Publishing for my domain name, even though my business name is Finch Press now, according to the forms. Now, with the business name, you can't operate under the business name until you pay. That's why I haven't changed my website um, and why I'm not changing this. This is just like a notification. Um, so there's that. Okay, uh, that's fairly easy. GST um, registration, I don't intend to apply for one because I don't need it at the moment. If my books do well and they reach that threshold, then yes, I would obviously need to get it, but right now it's not something I'm interested in doing. Um, from what I understand, the system in the US is sort of similar, um, but they have different names for it, so you would need to check, and different states have different rules, at least from what I found in the US. In Australia, it's the same system for every single state when it comes to business names and business numbers. So it's all one system for us. If you are in the US, you need to check with your local state, so with your state, because the rules will be different in each state from what I understand. And there's also like national rules and things like that. Um, yeah, so this advice, or this is what I found when it comes to setting up a business, or at least the first part of setting up a business in Australia, fairly, you can pretty much establish it fairly quickly, um, paperwork-wise. When it comes to tax time, I don't know. <laughs> That's why I'd wait, I wanted to wait until after the financial year to apply and set up the ABN, because I wanted to actually speak with my tax agent when like I like when I do my tax this year for this financial year to talk with them and to like give them a bit of a heads up hey I'm I'm setting up my own publishing business at the moment um now they're off yeah so when you fill out any of those forms regardless of whether it's Australia the US New Zealand um you need to make sure that whatever you put in is accurate there are penalties for falsifying information or even if you accidentally wrote something incorrect and there's penalties for that you can update your registration and i do recommend you update that regularly if there's any changes in um, doing it you can cancel your abn um, if you're no longer operating either under that name or if you're no longer operating as a business um, but as an author, as long as you receive royalties on your book, you need to have an ABN because you're still earning money. Um, I think that pretty much covers everything. Um, I will talk in the next video about setting up an account for Ingram Spark um, versus Kobo and Draft to Digital. Uh, so my experience with those um, and then when I buy my ISBNs I'll talk about how buying them went when it comes to Australia which is completely different to the US when it comes to cost. Anyway that's pretty much it from me. If you um, haven't seen my previous video I have set up a Facebook page um, an author Facebook page. Um, I post, I try to post daily uh, quotes, um, prompts for writing, um, some writing tips when it comes to writer's block or even just writing in general, um, resources for improving your writing. I try to put that there as well. Um, at the moment, I'm going to be putting my updates for Camp NaNoWriMo at least once a week uh, for the month and how I'm progressing with the novel Voiceless. Now I will eventually do things like giveaways, um, arc reviews and things like that through Facebook 
and through YouTube. Um, and I'll, when I get to that stage, then I'll put more information up. But right now, I'm only editing at the moment. So um, if you like this video or if you found this helpful, press the like button. If you want to be notified of when I update, hit subscribe. Um, and if you want to get some tips for your own writing or if you're just interested in progress or uh, in my progress with my writing, you can go to my Facebook page and follow me there. Alright, see ya.